尤其在延缓衰老效果方面，是他将来最重要的一个目标。下面我们欢迎纳诺教授给大家做报告。好，谢谢。Um, today my topic is systemic and the mitochondrial effects of molecular hydrogen. Um, my talk consists of three parts. Um, there are many ways to uh, apply hydrogen, as Professor Otto mentioned, but today I like to focus only two ways. Um, one is drinking hydrogen water, and another one is inhaling hydrogen gas, and then. Though um, I didn't put it in the title, but at the end, I'd like to mention a little bit about precautions about hydrogen water and hydrogen inhalation. Well, first, I'd like to mention the systemic effects of hydrogen. I mean, indirect effects of hydrogen. Well, the, f uh, the first step of our work is, is, well, I showed this figure several times in this meeting, I guess. But hydrogen in drinking water hardly, sorry, hardly reached to the brain. Well, we inserted hydrogen electrode to the rat brain in striatum, and then the, when the rat inhaled hydrogen gas, the hydrogen concentration in the brain increased rapidly. Though when they stopped inhalation, then it disappeared uh, quite quickly in our case. On the other hand, w when the animal drank hydrogen water or uh, when we put hydrogen water directly to their stomach, um, we could, uh, well, the hydrogen concentration hardly increased, so there is almost no increase. So that's the reason um, we uh, realized that there must be a stomach-brain connection and it may cause systemic effects. So there are some um, uh, endocrine, endocrine, well, endocrine systems involved, and so far the responsible hormones or hormonal axes are ghrelin, estrogen, or hypothalamus pituitary axis, adrenal axis, or hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. Well, to make a long story short, this is the, a scheme uh, that we are going to publish soon. Um, this is the maintenance of homeostasis and proposed effects of hydrogen. When we drink hydrogen water, then it goes to the stomach. And then it stimulates the release of ghrelin, one of the hormones, which is famous to stimulate appetite. But not only stimulating appetite, this hormone uh, stimulates the release of growth hormone. And because of this, presumably, it may stimulate uh, the production of sex hormones such as estrogen or testosterone. And on the other hand, uh, hydrogen also affects the um, autonomic nervous system and it, it stimulates the uh, um, sympathetic nerves and stimulating the release of noradrenaline. And this noradrenaline stimulates the release of ghrelin. So there is some uh, interactive, interactive relationship. Uh, that's, this is how drinking hydrogen water uh, works systematically. Well, I'd like to explain a little bit about ghrelin. Well, uh, how the ghrelin works uh, instead of hydrogen? Well, uh, this is the metabolic pathway of uh, reactive oxygen species and um, nitric oxides. And when we measured uh, in the Parkinson's disease animal, we took the brains and analyzed this either nitrate ions or nitrate ions. And in the Parkinson's disease model, uh, when they were applied MPTP, of course, these nitrites are increased. However, um, in the, when the animals drank hydrogen water, it was significantly reduced. It's because, presumably, while well, ghrelin is reported to suppress uh, the superoxide, uh, probably that's why um, ghrelin is working as antioxidant on behalf of uh, hydrogen. 
The second part is direct effects of hydrogen. I mean, the, uh, when we inhale hydrogen gas, uh, the hydrogen gas can penetrate to the, to the, uh, the whole body, and it can work on the cells or mitochondria directly. And then um, the mechanism, how hydrogen works on the mitochondria, for example, there are many reports already, and then already there are fantastic uh, presentations this morning. And um, one of my colleagues, Dr. Ishibashi's group, they thought that in the mitochondria, especially in uh, complex one, uh, so-called Q chamber, uh, presumably uh, reduced form of uh, coenzyme Q might be increased. And they, their hypothesis is two protons and two electrons surrounding the Q chamber are donated from hydrogen. But it is only a hypothesis, and we wanted to prove. So our original experiment, the purpose was uh, we wanted to measure the reduced form of CoQ H2. When whether CoH2, CoQ H2 really increases with application of hydrogen. However, it was difficult to measure this reduced form because partly because this reduced form is easily oxidized to ubiquinone. Well, this is the uh, structure of the uh, reduced form and oxidized form of um, uh, CoQ10. And you see this, this part is easily uh, oxidized. So, so we changed our mind. And then uh, we just wanted to show that not only cardiac cells, which was reported by Professor Slezak's lab, uh, we wanted to show that in neuronal cells as well, uh, repetitive administration of the hydrogen uh, increases the coenzyme Q10 in neuronal, cell, neuronal cells. We used cell line, a dopaminergic neuronal cell lines, and we cultured and then we applied hydrogen containing medium every day for seven days. And we bubbled uh, the medium with nitrogen as a control. And we just wanted to make sure that the cell viability was the same. And uh, we performed HPLC, and um, we tried to measure the CoQ10. And this is the uh, dose-dependent effect of application of CoQ10. So this peak means uh, the, the amount of CoQ10. So uh, this is the data. Well, it's hard to see this peak, the tiny little peak. But when we enlarge this peak, you see, when we applied hydrogen to the medium, this uh, coenzyme Q10 was a little bit bigger. So uh, with the same amount of mitochondria, we, uh, we isolated the mitochondria from the cells, and we measured coenzyme Q10. And you see, uh, when we applied hydrogen to the cells, uh, the coenzyme Q10, the amount of coenzyme Q10 was uh, significantly uh, bigger, uh, higher. Though we don't know how hydrogen increased the amount of coenzyme Q10, so it's going to be the future study. So the last part is um, people think that hydrogen is good. And of course, I believe that hydrogen is very beneficial. However, it's not almighty. And then sometimes we have to be care careful. So uh, I'd like to emphasize that um, uh, it is sometimes it is uh, well it is recommended not to use in the following cases for example stomach cancer and some other cancers and patients with extremely low mental or physical conditions or patients taking beta blocker I'd like to show four cases and I'd like to show one by one. The first one is, well, it was reported quite many years ago, 2002, where hydrogen gas serves as the energy source of Helicobacter pylori. So probably um, uh, people who carry Helicobacter pylori should not drink hydrogen water. The second example is, well, um, Professor Chin Jun uh, reported that hydrogen works as uh, anti-cancer uh, effect. However, there's also a report by Professor Ono's lab uh, 
hydrogen gas enhances proliferation of four out of seven human cancer cell lines. What are they? These are four. Uh, one is, uh, you see, uh, adenocarcinoma or cervical cancer or fibrosarcoma sarcoma or prosthetic small cell carcinoma. So this kind of cancer, probably patients should not take hydrogen. And the third example is from our experiment. Uh, as I mentioned probably before, uh, we performed, uh, we made Parkinson's disease model animal and we applied beta blocker to see that beta blocker uh, canceled uh, blocks the release of ghrelin from the stomach so that uh, the beta blocker canceled the beneficial effect of hydrogen. So it, it did block the beneficial effect of hydrogen, but in addition to that, it's very strange, we still don't know why. Well, um, with beta blocker, and we, when we made Parkinson's disease model, then uh, we using this rotor rod test. This rotor rod test is we put mice on top of this rod, and then the rod moves so that the mice try to uh, try try to not to fall down. Then, um, with beta blocker and MPTP, somehow mice dropped quite quickly at the beginning. Though, uh, when they practiced, they recovered, and after seven days, maybe they are the same as control. But somehow, we don't know why, again, maybe something happens, so uh, some behavior change, behavior deficits occur in the Parkinson's disease model mice with uh, beta blocker and hydrogen water. And the fourth example, this was done by a student, Du Donggyue, in Xi'an Jiangtong University. She wanted to see the beneficial effect of hydrogen water in sleep deprivation. And she put rats on a small platform and then poured water around it. And the rats hate water, so they, they don't want to fall into the water, so they can't sleep for 18 hours, for 21 days. But in the control, just sleep deprivation, rats looked okay. But when they had hydrogen water, somehow some or many rats fell down to the water and they couldn't climb up and then they are drowned. And you see some rats are drowned and died. And she observed the kidney and the, the rats with hydrogen water, somehow they had this fatty kidney. And then they, she also uh, measured the liver. And then you see with sleep deprivation and hydrogen water, the liver weight was significantly increased. Again, we still don't know why. And this is additional uh, data, uh, additional unwanted effects of hydrogen. In this case, hydrogen inhaling. Well, this is a patient of Parkinson's disease. Well, the patients inhaled uh, only 1.2 to 1.4% hydrogen for only 10 minutes twice a day for four weeks. And then, it's, it's very strange, but oxidative stress marker even increased. So they suspect that beneficial effects of hydrogen may be partly or largely mediated by hormetic mechanisms. So if the patients continue to inhale hydrogen gas much longer, for much longer period, for example, six months or one year, then maybe, maybe inhaling hydrogen works better. So the conclusion is, it was a very brief uh, presentation, but drinking hydrogen water, uh, it's, um, it, the effect is, is uh, via endocrine system and help maintaining homeostasis. And on the other hand, inhaling hydrogen gas causes direct effects of, to the cells, activating or protecting mitochondria. However, under certain conditions or unhealthy conditions, hydrogen water or hydrogen inha inhalation may cause unwanted effects, though the mechanisms are still unknown. Therefore, sometimes we must be careful. And then more analysis are needed. So I'd like to thank many members of my previous lab and uh, many members in Xi'an Jiangtong University's lab and Eugene Nazarov in Ukraine. 
and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mami Nano Joshu, for giving us a great report. He gave us several things. One is drinking water, and the other is drinking water. 呃，还原来产生效应